What is going on guys? Welcome to your 80 second drop tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys about exception handling. Now what exception handling is, is pretty much a way to handle errors. Now an error and an exception are the exact same things. So pretty much why would we want to handle an error? Well when the user does something they're not supposed to do we don't want to get an uh, error or else the program would just shut down and it'll stop running we want a way to do something like if they like divide by zero or click something they're not supposed to click then we don't want the program to shut down we want to be able to tell them they're wrong and tell them to fix their mistake so let's go ahead and I'm gonna use scanner so I'm gonna go ahead and import java.util Dot, I'll just import everything because I'm lazy and now let's just go ahead and let's begin making our system so scanner I'm gonna name it input equals new scanner and as parameters type system dot in and now we have an input variable called scanner so what do we want to do well let's just go ahead and make a little program to divide by two numbers so system out print line and go ahead and print like um just give them a prompt like enter first num and now for the first num just put int num1 equals input dot next int bam and now whatever they type for the first number is going to be the let's see numerator and now let's go ahead and copy this duplicate it and go ahead and set this equal to num2 and give them a new prompt and our second number and now let's go ahead and make a new sum equal to num1 divided by num2 so now we got a little program if we go ahead and print out the sum so system out print line and go ahead and print the sum and we'll run this and test it and make sure it's working so why does it say num1 oh here we go so now let's go ahead and test this real quick and see if it works okay enter first number 12 enter second number 3 and it gives us an answer of 4 so this works fine but if we run it again and we go 12 and for a uh, denominator we give it 0 remember you can't divide by zero it gives you an exception like this so this pretty much shuts down our whole program and what if we built a huge program for like analyzing the stock market and it was awesome and then some idiot tried to divide by zero and the whole thing just shut down well that wouldn't be good so we need a way to kind of handle these errors and tell the user all right don't do that but we're not going to shut down the program we're actually going to fix your problem well in order to handle exceptions you need to learn something called try and catch what try and catch means is it pretty much like pretty much just like it is you try a bit of code and if you have an error you instead of shutting down your program you're gonna catch that error and do something with it so here's how you do this go ahead and put try and that's a keyword and in your curly brackets fill in the code that you want to try so I'm gonna try this so in my try block right here I'm gonna write the code that I want to try so I'm going to go ahead and try this and what this try means and what this code block means if you have an error 
anywhere in here what we want to do is catch this error so go ahead and write catch after this and there always needs to be a catch after a try and there can be something called a finally too but for now remember there always needs to be a catch after a try and for catch what do we want to catch we're going to want to catch all errors and in order to catch all er errors remember they're called exceptions type ex C E P T I O N E. And why do you need to write this? There's actually different types of errors, like arithmetic error, um, I think one's called like input error, or something like that. But the, like, if they make a math error or if they click something wrong, there are different types of errors. But if you want to catch all of them, this means if they do anything wrong at all this is just the broad exception class right here so let's just go ahead and um, catch that and the E is pretty much if you want to print out E or something like that but if they have any errors what do we want to do let's type system out print line we'll just type something like um you can't do that and let me fix this so what this pretty much means is try this if you have an error do this if not if you try this and it works good then this is never gonna run at all so let me show you that I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna enter 12 3 Bam, four. This catch right here never runs at all. But if I run this again and I get an error and it says 12, zero, it says you can't do that in my rest of my program. If I had any more code down here, it would continue to run normally. So what if I actually wanted to build a program? So if they entered the wrong thing then I could pretty much have them do it again over and over again until they enter the right thing well let's go ahead and this is really simple put int x equals 1 so I'm gonna pretty much have a do while loop and I'm gonna do this do the pretty much the whole try and catch so catch this and want to catch that too I want to do the whole try and catch while X that we just made that's equal to 1 is equal to 1 so I'm gonna do that over and over again while this is equal to 1 but the thing is, if it continues to execute successfully, and I'm going to set this equal, the x equals 2. So as soon as it runs successfully, I'm going to set this x equal to 2, and it says, alright, that's the point in time when I stop. So here is a way where we can keep running this program over and over again until we get the right input. So if you had a really dumb user, the program will look something like this. Run sample. All right. And our first number, 12, um, zero. Oh, you can't do that. Try again. Okay. And our first number again. Let me uh, expand this a little bit. Um, 43, uh, 0. Oh, nope, you can't do that. Enter first number again. And it's going to keep trying and trying. So let's go ahead and do this right. So put like 40 and 10. Bam, 4. So that is how we can keep. Um, kind of prompting the user to do it correctly 
and let me review this one more time how I did this is I pretty much put alright what do I want to do over and over again well I want to try this code and if this code runs successfully I'm gonna change this variable but if this code does not run successfully then I'm gonna print out an error and this never even runs since you get an error in this and this and when it tries to divide the sum this is where the error happens right here on this line so this x never gets set equal to 2 so that is why x is still equal to 1 and that is why the do while loop is able to run over and over again but as soon as this whole thing okay good 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 bam we finally made it all the way x equal to 2 and then it looks alright is x equal to none x equal to 1 nope alright then we can finally exit this bad boy so that's pretty much your basics of try catch it pretty much I mean it's pretty simple try this if you get an error do this I mean how easy is that um, there's actually a little bit more to it and I'll probably be covering that in the next tutorial but for now thank you guys for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time